the podcast. You are trapped in history with Mr. Malcolmson and Mrs. Basham. This is episode six. We are finally starting unit number one. Our last unit was a little bit of a look behind and getting some context of the end of the Middle Ages and the Black Death leading into now. This is called the Renaissance, and this chapter will extend from the 14th century on to the 17th century, and you'll see more information through the podcast on this introductory episode, a little bit about that. Mrs. Basham, could you tell the students just a little bit about what this what the Renaissance really means? Yeah, absolutely. So the Renaissance really means rebirth, okay? And so whenever we think about the Middle Ages, where we're just coming from, that was whenever it was the fall of Rome, the fall of the classics. So we go through this dark ages, the dark period. Uh, the Renaissance is a rebirth of those previous classical ideas um, with Greek and Roman art and literature and styles kind of making it a comeback, making a rebirth. Um, so this is where we really start to see a lot of stuff that kind of represents what those Greek and Roman cultures were like. Yeah, this is such an important part about transitioning what we refer to as civilization, like the, these ideas and everything that inspired so many people for so long, they're finally being revitalized again by several famous characters. Now, since this is an introductory class, the students don't have to remember everyone that was connected to that, but at least one of those areas that's important to know is where it begins at. And it makes sense because the, the country we're mainly going to focus on this chapter will be Italy, and mainly the city will be called Florence, Italy, right? known as the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance. And we'll have a whole episode a little bit about all of that and why is it that it starts there and seems to spread throughout the culture, throughout also of, of Europe. And then we have other supplemental topics like humanism and individualism. Mrs. Bastian, like what, what is that really a focus on? Uh, whenever you hear those words, I mean, obviously you have human and individual. So it's really starting to look less at the religious aspects of society and focusing more on humans and what humans can do for themselves and the success that humans can have. Um, so, you, you know, you go from the Middle Ages, we talked about Walpurga and some of our Google meetings, um, a very religious society, very superstitious society. And that hasn't necessarily, you know, all of a sudden changed, but we do start to see a shift with the, the great thinkers and the artists um, starting to focus more on humans and what humans can do and what our bodies are like and um, you know what we are capable of as individuals and we start to see more of that now in the Renaissance. Exactly, and Mrs. Basham, if you could transition to the Google slide so we can show a few images here just through as we're kind of entering into the the differences between this Middle Ages era that you were talking about and now and you brought this up before because. The opposite of what Mrs. Basham is discussing is that through most of the writing, and a lot of it was being scribed because this is before the printing press. The printing press is not really introduced until now, but most of the things that are scribed and are copied are religious-based. Most of your focus and most of your value and the things that are done are through the lens of religion. And, and at this point, it's just it's still really just the Catholic Church. When it comes to Christianity, since Constantine, that's been the focus the entire time. So I think this is a good time, Mrs. Besson, to transition to the differences between Renaissance and the Middle Ages. And we can probably start with the art part. Do you want to talk about, since we just had finished the other part, do you want to talk a little bit about the... Uh, religious side of the effect and then I can jump into the art part after you talk about the differences between religion and how that was viewed during the Middle Ages compared to the Renaissance part. Yeah, absolutely. So just kind of flipping through here, hitting some of the topics that we've talked about. Um, this is Florence right here. Uh, we said that it was the heart of where it, all of this kind of started. Uh, we talked about how the religion played a huge role uh, during the Middle Ages and how now that not, hasn't necessarily changed a ton, but we also have to think about what occurred during the Middle Ages. Uh, you know, we had a famine, we had a little ice age, we had a plague. I mean, it was a hard time if you were living in Europe, especially if you were a peasant. Uh, so people, some people strengthened their religion, you know, and it became even more like we have to sacrifice and do more, um, you know, for Christ. Whereas others began to question, you know, why is God doing this? Why are we being punished? What have we done? So we start to see more of that shift uh, as we go into the Renaissance. And people really begin to question uh, things like the Catholic Church. And we're going to talk more about that probably next week with our Reformation unit, because all of this is going on at the yeah. same time. Um, but the Renaissance is where, again, we see more people start to focus on human aspect, less on religion. 
Yeah, and before you switch to the next slide, just real quick, next episode, we're going to get a little bit more into the architecture of this place, who's responsible for it, and even the symbolism of just look at the size of the cathedral in Florence compared to the rest of the buildings and the rest of the city, why it's located in the middle. We'll, we'll get into all of that on the next episode. Let's transition over to a little bit of the basic differences between art. Many of the students might recognize some of the bandanas, and Miss Basham, I'm going to credit with her with finding this on Google, and I thought it was just meaningful. We are going to talk about four, the four main Renaissance artists. Of course, there are more to remember, and AP-level students would have to be introduced to more of them. In our college prep classes, though, these are the main four artists that you need to know. Uh, blue being Leonardo da Vinci, orange being Michelangelo, red being Raphael, purple being Donatello. We'll look at at least one art piece of each one of these individuals and kind of have a little bit of a deeper discussion on that. But you're probably going to get more information about the information about the evidence that's going to be around these pictures in the podcast rather than only just what Mrs. Basham and I are saying. Now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Basham just to kind of discuss a little bit about probably the most, one of the most famous inventions this whole year we'll discuss other than the internet, and that's the printing press. Could you tell them a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So with the printing press, before it was invented, uh, the church was really left up to scribing all the books. And so, um, you know, everything was handwritten and you have to think about how much time that would take. Uh, the majority of the time, the one book that was rewritten the most was the Bible. A real long book with a lot of words so it took forever just handwriting every single little bit uh, with the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg we are able to instead of scribing every single little bit print it out and rapidly manufacture books uh, this does a couple of things first off you can make more books in less time uh, second that drives the price of books down Okay, so we have more of them uh, in the economy, so it's going to be cheaper to buy a book. You can get the Bible for cheaper. Um, other books are starting to become published. And so basically this allows for more people to have access to the literature. Now peasants are, uh, at least have access to the books, which gives more of them a chance at learning how to read. Now, yeah. at the time, you know, peasants typically still weren't literate, but there was at least more of an opportunity for the numbers to increase. So the printing press really changed uh, how people gained access to their books. And it made them rely on the church less because they weren't relying on the church to produce those books. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I mean, if you want to talk a little bit about how, you know, life wasn't super different for the peasants. Yeah. Again, it's going to seem weird because after the next episode, students may you know mistakenly believe that hey maybe all of europe was like this maybe all of it was like florence but and you have a great segue uh miss basham about the printing press and the effect that it has on literacy because the average individual the average peasant was very illiterate and we're talking about a very story driven society very visual society so you'll see pictures and wood carvings ways other ways to communicate with people other than through writing but over time it will make a difference so in general outside of your major cities life was pretty much still the same as it would have been before for peasants during the middle ages it was mainly built around agriculture but nonetheless it's still going to cause a great shift and a cultural shift over time this is really called the Renaissance because this is where modern history gets its birth. People usually refer to modern history right here, and this is kind of where it's influenced. Now, Mrs. Basham, I know we don't have it with us right now, but if the students go back to, I think it was episode four, they may get a chance to see that, that painting that we had of the Greek Colossus statue and the architecture mm -hmm. that was in the background. So it's not just through literacy, but also through architecture again. So you're reviving, uh, I guess, what used to be considered popular before, whether it is in writing, whether it is Latin language, whether it's uh, column looking architectures, very realistic statues, and things that we're talking about human. And I think a good way to conclude on my part today, and I'll toss it over to you, Mrs. Basham, is that it's going to be more about praising the individual and rationalism and humanism and individualism and even secularism, because it does become a little less suspicious. We'll dive more into those later on. But other than that, that's for me. That's it for me in producing the topic. Is there anything that you would like to add just to finish out? Uh, the only thing I think I'm going to add is I'm going to go back really quick to our PowerPoint just to kind of show the impact that especially the art had today. So we start to see art more about just common people and we're really focusing on um, the body and the muscles and anatomy and we start to learn more medically uh, at this time which helped obviously contribute 
to today. Good point. I mean, I, I just forgot all about the anatomy part, just the impact yeah. on science and what that's going to lead to later. It's, it's incredible. So, I mean, you can see here with the Statue of David, the difference between, um, well, I mean, I guess I, don't, I should have put a picture up here showing a Middle Ages statue right before, um, but the Renaissance, you start to see more muscles, the anatomy start being more correct. Um, and then along with that, we have the influence that the architecture has had on Western civilizations today. So many of our government buildings, I mean, you notice the dome, how similar that looks to the very first picture we looked at. Oh, yeah. And so- Well, even you know, locally seeing, for these kids, tying it into Kentucky, look at Frankfurt. Look at the, the oh, capital yeah. building of Frankfurt. My, most of your capital buildings are highly influenced by this Greek and Roman architecture. So great job bringing that up. So I wanna make sure we share that little bit, just that, you know, the Renaissance, this is the time it had a huge impact on today, especially the art, especially the sciences, especially the architecture, um, and a lot of the political questioning that starts occurring. But like you said, we're going to get into that in future episodes. I don't want to go too far into it today, kind of spoil it. Yeah. Well, I guess an effort to keep these episodes much shorter than the last two, we're just going to go ahead and release all of you now from your being trapped in history, and we hope you have a great day. Tune in to episode seven next. Thank you. Thank you.